All right, all right, all right. Ooh, mutants. Danger. Danger mutants. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Monday. It is November. November. Ooh, it's the biggest I've ever been. Um, I'm usually a tiny little box somewhere on the screen, but now look at this. I'm, I'm full screen, live and in charge. Um, oh, my case light's off. Oh, well, what are you going to do, right? Um, how's everybody doing? It is November. That means it is um, no longer October, which means I'm not, I don't have to paint orcs today, which is, you know, uh, I love painting orcs. Um, I actually was working on the bases for my uh, snotlings this morning, briefly, um, while getting ready to do all this and getting ready for today's stream. Uh, my hair is wild and out of control because I literally got out of the shower about 20 minutes ago, so this is just the drip dry look. We'll just uh, go with that and uh, yeah. So I hope everyone's having a good uh, start to the November. It is November 2nd, uh, which means what? Two months, give or take, until uh, Christmas, right? Yay, Christmas. Um, the Christmas come early today on the Eternal Chronicles. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm Christian, in case this is the first time you're watching. Um, uh, this is my live stream, which is kind of just sort of an off-the-cuff uh, me. Uh, generally, usually I'm painting. Today I'm not going to be painting. Um, but generally I'm painting, uh, talking about all the good stuff that goes on in the world of uh, miniature gaming and uh, sort of talk about my hobby and what it means to me. Um, as you can see, I'm not wearing the... Uh, you can't even see. You can't even see my shirt because my logo is blocking it. Oh, well. Well, you'll see it at some point. Um, but yeah, so uh, what are we going to do today? Well, I'm going to talk about Rogue Trader. Uh, so I'm going to go to the... Where are we going to go first? Let's go... Here. Oh, what happened to my thing? Sorry, I got to open that up. So weird. Sometimes it gets a little um, difficult to manage. Uh, I think I need a second monitor. Uh, just because of all the windows and stuff I need to have open at times here. So here we have uh, Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. And as you can see on my desk here in front of me, I have my copy of Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader, as well as some other stuff. Oh, this is, this is a Space Marine Outrider bike. It has nothing to do with Rogue Trader, except that this is... Um, this sort of shows that, you know, 30 years on into this hobby, and I'm still building Space Marines. Um, can't seem to avoid that. But that's one of the great things about 40K, and sort of one of the great things about, um, you know, this hobby is that it's managed to keep me engaged this long. Uh, I'm really, uh, more than any other game, I probably have a very, very, um, I don't want to say intimate, because that's kind of a loaded word, but a, a very... Um, interesting and, and long-term relationship with Warhammer 40,000. So, um, yeah, so I thought what we would do is I can flip through the book here. Um, uh, you know, but I'm wondering what you'll actually be able to see of that. Um, the other option is that we look at the PDF that I have on the side of the, the screen here. Uh, which may be a better option to go with. So here you can see, here's the first page. So this is the soft cover. So this, I believe, is the second printing. Um, the initial print run was... Uh, this is second imprint, so yeah. Um, so the the initial copy of... Ro the initial Rogue Trader rulebook was published in hardcover, and I never got a hardcover. My buddy Nico got a hardcover, which subsequently fell apart on him. Um, and I never got the hardcover, but I got the soft cover years later. Um, or couple little while later. Uh, so this is the first book, which is Rogue Trader, which um, is the game that launched a thousand ships. Let's call it that, something like that. Uh, and before Rogue Trader, I was really ignorant to miniature wargaming. Um, I um, collected random fantasy miniatures to paint for Dungeons and Dragons campaigns that may or may not have ever happened. Uh, my first time I remember hearing 
Warhammer in, in, in regards to the game uh, was a friend of mine mentioned that two of his friends were off playing Warhammer at another guy's house. And I was like, well, it's Warhammer. He's like, well, it's like Dungeons and Dragons, but you use lots of minis on a, on a big table. And I was like, well, that sounds really cool. Um, and then I never, I forgot about it, right? And then I heard about it a while later. We were walking by a store um, that no longer exists here in Toronto called the World House. Uh, and in the window, they had a display. Uh, and I happened to be walking by with the same friend who had mentioned that his friends were off playing Warhammer. Um, I looked at him and I said, oh, what's that? Um, of course, I didn't say it like that because I was 12 or 13 years old at the time. <laughs> 13 or 14 years old at the time. Um, and uh, so I probably said, oh, what's that? Because my voice was probably cracking or whatever. Um, you know, in the full throes of puberty. Um, so, what, what, so and what was in the window were some plastic space marines set up on a table with some of the uh, RTBO2, which are the Space Orc Raiders, which if you watched my stream uh, last month, in the month of Octo October, you watched me paint a whole bunch of those types of orcs. Um, so, and that was sort of the first time I saw Warhammer, was in the window of the World House. Um, I didn't actually get into painting Warhammer until my buddy Nico came home one day with a blister. And for the sake of awesomeness, um, going through see all these blisters sitting on the desk here we're gonna get to those i promise you we will get to these because i've been waiting to open these man um but so he came home with a blister and it was actually this blister this exact blister so the two models that are in this blister are the first two warhammer 40k models that um i ever had access to let's say um because my buddy nico bought the blister brought it home and subsequently traded me one of the models in the blister so that we would both have a model to paint um, and that's going to be the first blister I open here. So I'm just going to move this away for a second so we have a nice clean table to open this on. And I'm going to put this down and I'm going to actually switch over to this shot so you can get a nice, uh, there's dust flying and floating around. So I uh, did some, I did a photo shoot over the weekend, shot all my Iron Hand Space Marines and my Craft World Eldar. Uh, which we'll be updating onto the eternalchronicles.ca at some point. Um, probably some point this week I'm going to update the galleries and try and get all those models out there and um, talk about them and write, do some write-ups and stuff for, for those guys. Um, but here we go. So this is the blister that, start, that started it all for me. Uh, my buddy Nico brought this blister home from the Silver Snail, promptly traded me one of the two models in it, and if you can guess which one I painted and which one he painted, you get one fake internet point. So there you go, fake internet point if you can guess which one I painted and which one he painted. Um, but this is the exact blister. So this is this is the exact two models that uh, he came home with. And apparently he tells me now in hindsight that I um, chided him for buying sci-fi miniatures and not buying fantasy models. I, I don't remember. It was 30-something years ago. Um, I think it would have been the summer after I finished junior high school so grade eight so that would have been 1998 so basically more or less when 40k was was brand new when rogue trader was brand new um and so let's just open this blister because <laughs> i know that's what you guys are here for i know you guys aren't here to hear me talk about rogue trader and and my experience with rogue trader let's pardon me while i tuck my giant chair in here and try and get it out of the ruts in the floor um yeah so, how do we open blisters? Well, this is how I open blisters. Usually it's grab a corner and just peel. And this should be really easy because a lot some of these blisters are in better condition than others. Um, and there's two little bases for us there. Beauty, look at that. So this is 5006 Adventures is the code on this blister if you're keeping track. Um, and here's some of that old foam, which I've seen some blisters where the foam is literally powder like it's just completely uh rotted to nothing um this one is still pretty foamy it's got a little yellowing around the edges but i don't think we're here to talk about foam uh, talk about it all you can thanks kevin uh welcome to uh the chat welcome to my channel um good to see people here watching enjoying um so here we have this guy, and on his uh, base tab, it says Space Thug. And it says GW1988. 
Of course it would. And then this guy, his says Space Pirate. And he's got a melt gun which is kind of awesome. We can straighten that out. Uh, and, you know, if I didn't know better, like, the these models could have been forged yesterday. Like, they are in really good condition. There is no lead rot on them. They um, they feel brand new. They're, they're clearly lead, but they're not also discolored. There's no oxidation. Great stuff. Um, and both these models hold a special place in my heart in some ways. I have no idea what's hanging off this guy's thing there. Um, but just so you know, um, this is the one. So this is the first 40K model I ever painted, is this Space Pirate, or Space Thug. Um, and what a great model he is. Not with his LAS pistol. <laughs> Just, I mean, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, a, a fur loincloth and a, a laser gun. He's ready to rock. This guy's a little bit more intense. He's got a nice melt gun going on here. So I'm just going to stick these guys in their bases. And we'll push them up here. All right. So that was that was that. So literally, um, Nico gave me that model, traded it probably for something that I had, or just gave it to me on spec, or you know, because basically I would trade him a model. We we would trade back and forth stuff all all the time. Uh, essentially, the way I describe, um, we both became obsessed about Warhammer, as as the only a 13, 14 year old boy can become obsessed about Warhammer, um, and uh, subsequently spent all of our available funds on buying more miniatures and we just um, no one else we knew was interested in really playing it i mean we had people that you know may have uh you know but didn't collect or didn't paint or but may have been aware of the game may have played you know people in our dungeons and dragons group or i guess at that time we were probably playing rifts um palladium game uh so there was a lot of that, and then so essentially we couldn't find anyone else to play with us, so we just did it with each other, right? Um, and we had, we had that was what, we had no problem with that. We enjoyed that. Um, so I'm gonna grab another blister here because I feel like uh, this is this is the main event. Some of these blisters are in better condition than others, and some of these, okay, those are ones we'll, we'll do we'll do later. I'm not trying to do these in any, any particular order. I just wanna okay. So here we go. Here's another five thousand and one. Oh, and a piece of this already fell out. So. Um, and you can see 5001 Rogue Trader. So these were like initial releases before they were even necessarily assigned anything. Um, like this one says 5000, whoop, 5005 Adventurers. This is 5001. So 5001, these are the first initial Rogue Trader releases upon the release of the book. This book, right? Uh, when this book came out, these 5001 code blisters were the first releases for it. There were some previous releases for Rogue Trader, um, of which I have one of the models. Actually, I think I have a couple. I think there's one in here, actually. Um, but this little Space Goblin here, Space Goblin, um, this little Space Goblin uh, is one of the initial, like, pre-rulebook released models. Um, for Rogue Trader, and you can see uh, most of this information that I'm getting uh, comes from either my memory or reviewing some of the stuff on Stuff of Legends. So if you go to um, stuffoflegends.com, uh, and that's Orc Lord's website over there, S O L S O Legends.com, uh, and then there's also the Collecting Citadel Miniatures Wiki, which is also helpful with with release dates and information. What I like about the stuff of Legends is that he's got scans of like mail order catalogs, um, trade catalogs, uh, white dwarf advertisements. So you actually get a real sense of like what month and what year models were actually made available to purchase. So you can see this little metal space marine backpack. It's actually just a little metal power backpack. Because one of the guys in here, and this blister is literally falling apart. Yeah, I don't even need to open this. <laughs> this is just open itself. Um, and this is quite brittle at this point so. Uh, so there's 5001 rogue trader oh damn look at that this came with hex bases that's how crazy this is um yeah so th this blister came with hex bases so i don't know what the story behind that is i know that they, that they generally tended to pack things with rant like you I, I remember getting um some orcs with metal hex bases um and i think that's because i bought rafam 
like they were packaged in Ralph Partha or Raffam packaging. Um, but anyways, uh, so what do we got here is we've got two, well this just says Trooper on his base and he's got what looks like a space M16 and then he would wear this little backpack, cute. Let's stick him in on, on this hex base over here. And then this guy who I believe is called Breakout Con in the uh, in the catalog. All these guys had names too. That's the other cool thing. Um, is that a lot of if you look specifically at the White Dwarf advertisements for the painted versions of these, or even the mail order catalog versions of these, and sometimes the mail order catalogs would conflict with what was in the White Dwarf advertisement in terms of like naming or what they were. I believe this guy was called Breakout Con, which is just an interesting name, I guess. Uh, and I love these old hex bases. And the thing you can tell about our old original GW hex bases, maybe I'll pull out a, a newer Arms Keeper hex base and I can show you the difference. And I only noticed this because I was basing some stuff on hex bases. Where are my bases? Sorry, I'm just digging back here now for random uh, is this bases. Yay, bases! It even says bases on it somewhere. No, it doesn't. Um, so when I was digging for, um, so I, I, I'm mounting some stuff on hex bases for reasons. <laughs> I'm doing some stuff on hex bases. So I bought some arms keeper hex bases. And you can kind of see the difference a little bit between the GW hex bases and the arms keeper hex base. Uh, the GW slotta is a little bit more angled and the corners are a little bit more rounded. But other than that, uh, they're basically identical hex bases so um, good stuff good stuff I'm actually glad that these came with with hex bases because I I've got tons and tons of round slaughter bases but old GW hex bases are actually something that I'm, I'm looking for um, so let's put these guys in their bases and we'll stick them over here so this is two little guys that will become um, so this is now four models that are going to end up being um, mercenaries or pirates space pirates um, probably space pirates because everyone loves space pirates, right? All right, so let's grab the other blister here. So here we can see we've got another 5001. This is another rogue trader blister. And I believe this guy in here, well, let's get him out first and then I'll tell you what his name was if I remember correctly. If I recall correctly, um, in this base, this blister I actually have to work to get into and it comes with round bases. Look at that. So there's another 5001 base. Uh, so I believe this guy's name was World Burner. Uh, and I don't know how many worlds he's gonna burn with that little pistol. I almost want to make that like that's like a needle pistol. You could get away with calling that a needle pistol. But he's a really cool model. I like his face and his little um, vision visor optic thing there. Um, just taking off some flash there. And another one of like this kind of. So a lot of times back in the day, they would build models on the same sort of maquette. The sculptor would sculpt one or like a basic uh, frame, and then they would cast that, and then he would then take that and sculpt all the different variants on it. And I talked about that when doing my orcs, because a lot of the orcs, some of those orc models, there's like three or four different variants all based off the same uh, core model. And with these, I think there's there's like three or four, or maybe a few more, maybe, maybe like five or six. Uh, and this guy's got an M16, like literally that is an M16. Um, so we would call that a, a auto gun. <laughs> uh, and then we've got the world burner here and there's the world burners base so all right so we're up to uh six models here to potentially be used as space pirates all right here comes another blister boom uh speaking of models built on the same maquettes and i should really like kai these so you don't see the the coming attractions <laughs> um so let's open this one because we've got a, another couple of really cool models in here and what I love is that these are all like old school humans. Oh, and we got hex bases again. Sweet. Uh, these these are like old school basic humans, which, I mean, they they were sort of the bread and butter of 40k when it first started. Like this was this was the game was these guys versus like space orcs and elf corsair, but like elf space pirates and uh, squats um, and monsters because because. Uh, Rogue Trader was was basically built as a, um, and this says 87 on his tab, which is interesting. I don't know why that's interesting, but it is. And it says Trooper there, and then this says Trooper. So I believe this guy said Trooper as well, yeah. 
so we got three troopers what does this guy say anything no so this guy's base tab is blank um, but as you can see uh, once again we're now you know like three four models five models I don't know about this guy but all of these guys are clearly based on the same dummy maquette whatever you want to call it uh, but we're gonna stick some more of these guys in here and we're up to eight so this is eight humans for my space pirate crew uh, and the other cool thing is that I'll actually be able to add these into um, my orc army because I have where do I acquire such old-school kits uh, these were uh, from a, uh, a guy I know, a friend of mine, Michael Logan, who runs Logan Miniature Mart. Uh, you can go look him up on uh, on Facebook, Logan Miniature Market, and uh, I think it's Logan Miniature. I want to say it's either Logan Miniature Market or Logan Miniature Mart. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Logan's Miniature Market. Um, but uh, uh, so his uh, sorry, just give me one second here. I'm just going to confirm. So that I'm not uh, giving off, giving out incorrect information. I'm pretty sure it's Logan's miniature mark. Uh, but anyways, he uh, uh, he just finds this stuff. <laughs> I don't know. He has connections. He has ways and means that I do not pretend to understand. Uh, but he had these, and then over time, I sort of been um, acquiring them from him uh, because he knows that. I love to paint and paint old miniatures, so I'm sort of on his uh, VIP list of guys who sort of get the first crack at some of this stuff, because um, he knows that a uh, you know I'm not I'm not really I'm a collector, but I'm a collector who likes to paint. So leaving this stuff in blisters um, has no value to me. Taking it out of the blister and painting it, doing what I'm doing right now, has value to me. So. Um, so yeah, so he's kind enough to, uh, well, not kind enough, I mean, there was a financial transaction involved, uh, but he, he found the stuff and I bought the stuff, and that's amazing. Uh, and this, this entire project is predicated on the fact that he did that. Because uh, I had sort of had some musings about, um, I had done a whole bunch of old hammer, like old war hammer. Uh, he's located in Mississauga. Does he have a storefront? No, uh, he he runs it, it. He runs it as a side hustle. So you just got to contact him through his website, and he usually will ship stuff out to you, or you can you can you can come and, and meet up with him and pick stuff up. So yeah, so it's not an actual store because he said he generally sells uh, used stuff, um, really old used stuff and newer used stuff too. Uh, so you know if if. And generally, he sells it. You know, he's he's very very reasonable. He's not a gouger. He doesn't use eBay because of that reason. Generally, so yeah. The next time you're in Canada, when traveling is allowed, you have to stop by. Yeah. Um, he he does ship anywhere. He does ship in North America though. So if you do see anything on his Facebook page, um, you can let him know, and and he can work out. Uh, you know, he he ships at cost. So whatever whatever the cost would be to ship to this to wherever you are. Um, so yeah, so let's keep opening some blisters here, because I think that's that's what we're all here for, really. That's what I'm here for. Uh, I've been waiting, because I've had these for about two months now, sitting in a box. Um, maybe a little bit less than a month um, or so. Just over a month, because and I wasn't going to open them until October was done. So all throughout October, all I could think about was, man, I can't wait to finish painting these orcs so I can open these Rogue Trader models and paint them. So let's get to the next one. We have another 5001 Rogue Trader blister. So these two models are actually from that pre-book release. So if you go onto Stuff of Legends, you'll see um, like what they what, what he's what they've listed over there as like the first releases. And these two. So let's gently, gently, gently. That's as gentle as it gets, eh? Um, open that. Scarred the foam, and we've got two more models. So we've got another guy with an M16 here, and on his tab it says Army. Uh, and I believe in the advertising he was listed as a trooper. So this is pre-Imperial Guard. He would be Space Army. Um, but he, you'll see that he fits in really well with the other guys, and we'll just get rid of the... Uh, like I call these things Caltrops, because it used to be you'd end up with them on the floor. And then uh, you're in Sweden. Okay, well... You're in the you're you're a lot closer to where these things were made than I am, um, for the most part. So there we go. So there's another 
Trooper, so one more guy to add to my Space Pirates, and this guy's really cool too. Um, this is actually a model that I did own as a youth, uh, and I believe I painted him in like like woodland green overalls, and it looked terrible. Um, but he's a nice little model, and he's just like he he's a very nice little generic space trooper guy. Uh, he's got a little backpack on him here, and his tab. His tab says 85. There's no way. This just says copyright GW. It is possible that this guy was sculpted in 85 because there are early... Um, yeah, that definitely says 85. Amazing. Because um, there are there are earlier... I mean, he could have been sculpted and then sat on the shelf for a while because the, the Rogue Trader project was in works for a while. There are... I think it's in the Citadel Spring 86 journal... Citadel Journal in the back, and again, Stuff of Legends, where I get all this knowledge from. This isn't really off the top of my head. Um, it is off the top of my head only because I, I, I religiously pour over that website. Um, but I think it's in the back of the Spring 86 Citadel Journal, which is the first advertisement for Rogue Trader. And it's not called Warhammer 40,000. It's just called Rogue Trader at that point. And it's, it's billed as more of like a space piratey game. Um, so it's it's billed as like you take on the role of a space trader, and these are your adventures as you as you venture out to make fame and fortune in 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 the universe. It had a very the artwork almost had like a real traveler, um, which was a really popular role playing game at the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was some 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 uh, saturation of influence there. Um, but it had a real traveler feel to the artwork and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna leave this blister because I know what that one is, but that's that's we'll do that one after. Uh, but I have no idea what this blister is, so whatever this one is, the next one we're opening. You ready for it? Boom. Oh, awesome. Uh, so here we have 5,006 adventures. So we had 5,006 adventures, um, 5,001 rogue trader. So this is another 5,006 blister. So, and I can see that it comes with round bases, because I can see the, the base. Um, this guy is called a, on, in the advertising, this guy's called a hive ganger, and this guy's called a navigator, but he's also later referred to as just a psyker. Um, but he is officially a navigator. Um, and you can see he's got his little bulbous head here, and he's got some fancy clothes and a little, oh my god, this guy's a ridiculous model. Um, so yeah, so his base tab says navigator, um, which if you don't know what a navigator is, I suggest you go um, read some 40k lore about what the navigators are uh, and where they shamelessly stole that from would probably be Dune with the navigator with the spacing guild uh, this guy would be like you know what's he got in his hand here nothing he's just kind of like I don't know just like this with his hand it's weird uh, and he's got a really frilly little shirt and he's got a sliced up uh, collar nice little shoulder pad this is a, this is a great model so this guy's going to be this guy will not. This guy might be a space pirate. He might be a space pirate because uh, space pirates need navigators too, right? Um, pull those out. Another caltrop. <laughs> That's what they call it caltrops because they end up on your floor and you step on them, and it's like stepping on a caltrop. Um, and this guy, I believe, it says Hiver. Oh no, it just says pirate on his base. But if you look in the. Uh, Advertisement, I believe he's listed as a hive ganger or a hiver. So even back then, the hives existed. He's not never mind. I love I love his little hand crossbow. And his chain sword is the exact same chain sword as a space orc model I own. And I'm looking at this model and I'm thinking that this model might have been sculpted by Kev Adams. Um, and that's just guesswork in terms of how some of the detailing on him is done. Uh, and I know that Kev Adams did sculpt some of the initial Rogue Tra early Rogue Trader leaves before they basically stuck them on doing orcs and goblins all the time. Uh, this says 87, and this says 80. It's either an 87 or it's an 8. I'm going to go with 88 on this guy. Um, so there we go. Two more models to add to my fledgling... Space Pirates crew. Uh, and here's another blister of Space Pirates. So this is another 5006 Adventurers blister. And we got two more cool guys in here. Let's rip them out. We got eh, round vases. 
This is a lot of fun, by the way. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun doing this. I hope you guys are having just as much fun watching me rip these open as, as I am. Um, so here we go. So this guy says Bandit. Uh, and he definitely looks like a bandit. He's got like a little knife here. It's got like some serrated edges, so it's like a little saw knife. And this pistol, I would definitely call this pistol a needle pistol. In fact, I will I will definitely call that a needle pistol. Um, some kind of needle gun. This guy could be Jerry Cornelius uh, with his needle gun. If you catch that reference, you get one fake internet point. Uh, and this guy, what does his base say? Whoa, space eunuch. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so this guy's a space eunuch. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What, I don't know what else to say about that. He's a space eunuch with a chain sword. Um, I don't know what makes a. Oh, and he's got a last pistol over here too. I think. Yeah, he's got a little little pistol. I don't know what makes someone uh, makes a eunuch a space eunuch. I guess whatever makes a pirate a space pirate. He's a eunuch in space. So there's one more model. Two more models. Oh, and we're barely through. Look at all these blisters I still got. All right, what are we opening up next here? Boom! Oh, in 5005, Imperial Army. So this, let's open these. These are not space pirates, but um, a little bit later release here. Got some bases. And the cool thing is, is look at that. That is a beast man. So back in the day, uh, Rogue Trader, or not Rogue, yeah, so back in Rogue Trader days, and in, and uh, to a lesser extent, a little bit in 2nd edition, I think you could still do it in 2nd, oh, maybe you couldn't do it in 2nd edition. No, there were no Beastman Guards units. Anyways, um, Tyler says, zoom in for details. Well, we can zoom right in. Why not, eh? That's what you want? Is that what you need? There we go. Uh, so this is a beast man, and I believe on his base it says beast man, and he's got an auto gun, and he's got what looks like a little chain knife, which is kind of cool. Um, cause yeah, cause uh, essentially, um, beastmen were still, I mean, they were, they were considered tainted by chaos, but the, but the Imperium would show up and, and attempt to tame them anyways, and, uh, would have sanctioned beastmen units that you could add to Imperial Guard units, cause essentially all the abhumans were created by the conditions on whatever planet they worked on. So um, the assumption is that squats were humans once, and then they went to high gravity worlds. And the high gravity on those planets shrunk them down and made them stocky and, and dense and, and built for that sort of thing, right? Um, oh, this guy's, this guy's a real collector piece. Because um, this is a wounded guardsman. So you can see he is, he's gonna be like, oh, I'm so wounded. Um, so yeah, so Ogrins, were also were like um, went went to like some planets where the living was life was really hard, and over the millennia they sort of evolved into being ogrens, uh, rattling same sort of thing. Uh, beyond that, so those are your sort of your ab humans, right? And the Imperium would have sanctioned ab humans because technically they were mutants, so technically they were. Um, tainted and and verboten but you could you could you could be sanctioned and and recognized and purified in some way um we'll just put the little wounded guy there hey, get on your base and stay on your base he doesn't want to he wants to, the base to move around underneath him there we go uh, i'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can um get going a bit more here on some blisters so here's a here's a here's a blister with two models in it that i'm really hyped to, to get my hands on and to paint there's another 5006 Adventurer's Blister. Let's rip it open. Oh. Uh, that's fine. Boom. Uh, so these two models I've never owned before, and I'm pretty hyped about that. Um, never even... This guy is amazing. And it says Trooper on his base. Uh, in the catalog or in the advertisement, he's called like some kind of... I think it begins with a V, like a Vergarian Pirate. So I don't know if this was like a plan to release an army or a race of these specific types of guys. But again, really cool model, really nice, cool sculpt. And he's got what looks like some kind of a crazy las gun. And a knife, and he's wearing power armor for sure. Very cool power armored model. Pull off the counter. 
there. We'll stick him on his base. Boom. And then this guy who's going to, who it says tech here. And this guy's been listed as everything from a uh, Mechanicus, Mechanicum guy, to an Astropath. Um, I think he was once just called a technician. So he's, he's had a number of monikers. Um, but his base tab says tech, and it just says copyright Jeppy. When does this guy say he was sculpted? Because that's interesting. Okay, so this says 1985. So this is a very early sculpt. So yes, um, chances are this was probably something they were working on. This guy might even be like, a, uh, in some ways, a proto space marine. Because um, back then, space marines, um, you would just get guys in power armor. I mean, space marines were specific guys in power armor, but I have a feeling that there's a story behind this model, especially if he was sculpted in 85. So he's one of those really early um, pre-rogue trader sort of just like generic sci-fi miniatures that Citadel did. The tech, on the other hand, um, in my in, in my setting, where I'm going to be using this guy, this guy's actually going to be a xenobiologist for reasons, um, because my Inquisitor is going to be part of the Order of Xenos. So this is his, his xenobiologist that he drags around with him. All right. Um, what do we got in these? Are these all what I think they are? Yeah, these are all... What do we got over here? So I think that brings us to like the end of the Space Pirates. I have a few loose ones that I'm going to pull out just to show you. Um, these are models that I acquired um, previously that are going to be sort of part of this whole... Um, I call it like the Dramatis Personae. Um, I'll just put those there for now. Let's grab the one that I dropped. Yeah. And then we'll grab you as well. Ah! Oh, nice catch. My headphones caught that snotling bass before it. Um, so this is my Inquisitor. This is Inquisitor Kafka Dosadi. Um, and if you get the joke in the name there, we'll score one fake internet point. Um, so this will be my the Inquisition um, representative. And he actually is in my Space Orc army as a human advisor. Uh, and I'm building a retinue for him out of these guys and some of these guys. Uh, and his his butler, Mr. Butletron, the robot, um, which is a Conqueror class robot with some arms from, I think, the Colossus. Anyways, uh, he's got a flamer, power fist, bolter, power fist, heavy bolter. Pretty well fitted out for a robot. So this is this is um, my Inquisitor's personal valet, Mr. Butletron, the robot. So that will be part of the retinue and the Xenobiologist here will be part of the retinue, and then I will figure out what mo other models from these will be part of the retinue. I kind of like the idea of maybe throwing this guy in um, as like some like spacer kid that he picked up, that maybe he's even um, training to become an acolyte, maybe a future Inquisitor. The bandit with the needle pistol, I really like too, as possibly being in the retinue, but he also might be a good space pirate. Uh, not the eunuch, the navigator, very potentially, because uh, he would probably have an astropath with him at all times. I'd like to actually get one of the astropath models. Um, so let's take a look at some of these other guys I picked up. Now, these are Iron Claw models. So if you don't know what Iron Claw is, um, the sculptor Bob Ollie, miniature sculptor. When So when a lot of sculptors would go and work for Games Workshop, they would make like sub-imprints of Citadel. So Marauder Miniatures was a sub-imprint of Citadel. Um, Chronicles was a sub-imprint of Citadel. And it was basically guys sculpting for Citadel, um, but doing sort of their own ranges. So Iron Claw was what Bob Ollie's sub-imprint of Citadel was called. I don't know why they did this. You'd have to ask them. Uh, but he sculpted a whole bunch of Space Pirates and Adventures that were available in their own blisters, but were then later mixed in with sort of the generic uh human blisters so we'll push these guys over here uh so this is the first one and this is uh it just says pirate on his base and there is no copyright tab or anything on him um, but this was a bob ollie model that um he sculpted and i'll hold him up to the camera here you can get a nice little view of that um so this guy is also essentially i'm just going to put him on this used base <laughs> This used base that says Frankie on the front of it. I have no idea where that came from because I didn't write that on there. Um, and then what else we got? Oh, I, oh, 
Well, I've got duplicates of that guy now, but uh, there was one more, but she is somewhere else. I gotta find her. I think she's actually in here. But she managed to get mixed in with a bunch of orcs. I think she did. Yeah, there she is. Um, so he did this, which is a female pirate model. Um, not that you can really tell, Bob Ollie is not known for sculpting beautiful miniatures. He's definitely known for sculpting interesting and characterful miniatures. So this is like a, uh, uh, what's her name? The Buffalo Bill Circus, uh, the Buffalo Bill side show, uh, Calamity Jane, you know, um, not a handsome woman, but a capable one, I guess. So here's Calamity Jane, we'll call her. And it just says, here it just says Cyber Girl on her tab. And we have GW 1987. So these were, so these Iron Claw ones were some of the, the, the first releases. Uh, and they may even have been released prior to the release of the Rogue Trader rulebook. Don't quote me on that. Smarter people than me would know. Let's get her a base here since these guys, these blisters don't have bases in them. And we'll throw her up over here. She's obviously, she obviously needs to be straightened up a little bit. Great thing about working with lead models is you can bend them by hand. We'll just put her back down there. Zoom back out a little bit so you can see more of the table. Um, here is one more. This is now Bob Ollie also did a bunch of aliens. So this just says mercenary on his tab. Um, but he did a bunch of these like alien guys. And I'm not really sure. Um, they never really became anything. I don't know if they were ever mentioned, but there are a few of them that have these, like, I don't know, I want to call them, like, cabbage heads. You're a dead cabbage head. Um, so he's some kind of weird alien with some kind of weird alien gun. Uh, he's a really cool model. I wanted to have him for my space pirates, so there he is. I'm just going to lay him like that. Uh, I got a duplicate <laughs> of, the, uh, of this guy. So I bought this guy before I knew that um, Michael had this blister for me. Uh, so I've got doubles. Yay, doubles. I've got two. Maybe I'll make them twin brothers or something. So he can go back over there. And then I got a couple more. Uh, this one I really like just because it's a classic adventurer model. And it's kind of a... Um, I don't say famous. What do you call it? Renowned? I don't know. To me, at least, there was some important. There, there was some coolness to it. Um, so it's her base says space punk. Oops. Her base says space punk. Space punk. Uh, I guess because she's got a mohawk. Maybe she's like this guy's little sister, or big sister, or twin sister, or they're not related in any way at all. I don't know. But that's another one. So you can see I've got quite the the, the, the pack of uh, Dramatis Persona here for my campaign. And then this guy, who I just also thought was a really cool model, and his base tab says Trooper, sculpted in 87. And uh, he's just another cool model. And another guy you could potentially throw into some power armor. He might be a leader or something. He looks like he's, uh, he's pretty cool. I like his big giant like eye things here. It's almost got like an insectoid style face. All right. So the last one of these adventurer blisters, I think all the rest of these are something else. And the, 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 the mad thing is, the totally crazy thing is, is I've still got boxes up here filled with blisters, but not necessarily Rogue Trader blisters, possibly something else. Um, so we'll just zoom out it's just so you can see all of those models. Look at that. Look, I mean, so that's, 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 my painting for the next month or so. Hopefully, I will get these done. Uh, I'm going to paint them one at a time. I want to do them all individual. I want to give them some TLC, some 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 love and attention, uh, and they will be painted to match uh, the same bases as my space orcs because they're all going to be sort of occupying the same theater, the same uh, narrative story, the planet called Logan's World. Ironically enough, uh, Logan's World being an example setting uh, from Rogue Trader. And you know what we'll do? Let's swap the swap. Oh, I gotta get that up here. There we go. 
hopefully you'll be able to see that. Uh, like I said, I need I need uh, multiple monitors here in order to be able to pull this off better. So let's go down, uh, way down, because I know it's near the back of the book. Um, here we go. Boom. Oh, plant chart. So uh, this is in the Age of the Imperium section. And it just sort of gives you, this was the first sort of like, here's the setting. And the planet that they chose to pick as the example planet is this planet called Logan's World, which exists in the Lost Planets. So it even talks about how they are isolated for eight years at a time. Uh, technological atrophy and improvisation is the order of the day on Logan's World. Uh, essentially, because of warp space and because of the warp storms, these lost worlds exist within the periphery of the Eye of Terror. So these storms brew up and uh, the, the, the planets are isolated. They're not necessarily isolated from each other, but they're isolated from the Imperium. Then when the storms subside, as they call it, the Eye of Terror blinks. Yeah, once every four to ten years, the Eye blinks. And for a few days only, ships of all races fly to and from the lost worlds many imperial planets lie deep within the eye of terror and so do and so too do many aliens and anarchic planets so that's this is sort of what i want to base my setting on because um a i got these models from michael logan so i'm naming my my campaign after him in some ways uh i'm not going to use you know the the, the 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 logan's world that exists here but i'm calling my my campaign Logan's world and it'll be sort of that sort of idea it'll be a lost planet it'll be um the Imperium only comes in once every decade you know they said what four to ten years so they don't even know so they're like they're like waiting for the storms to subside I guess maybe the uh the astropaths or the the astronomicon sorry my hair I'm growing it out and it's a disaster and I'm always playing with it now these days I should just shave it all off again um so yeah the uh so this is what I'm sort of going to base my my uh, um, idea, and it's 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 Moss Eisley. It's the wretched scum of scum, uh, wretched hive of scum and villainy. It's Tatooine. It's Mad Max, the planet. It's essentially what what the setting that they're that they're they're putting forward here. And you can see it has a very sort of fantasy setting to it, especially if you look at this picture, where you've got it's like your typical like tavern scene. Um, You've got an orc, you've got a dwarf, you've got some humans, you know, you've got maybe elves in the back there, who knows, but it's like, so it, it it's that very much that 80s fantasy trope, but turned towards sci-fi, a little bit of Star Wars influence, a little bit of, you know, Dune influence, a little bit of uh, definitely some Harry Harrison Death World influence, uh, Heinlein Starship Troopers influence, um, you can go on, I'd say that like the three big Influences on 40k for me would be the three H's, which would be Harrison, Heinlein, and Herbert. Those three are our authors. I think had a huge, massive influence on um, on Warhammer 40k on on uh, uh, Rick Priestley, who wrote and created sort of the, the 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 initial kernel of lore that would evolve to become Warhammer 40,000. Um, and there's other books too by other authors obviously I just say the three H's because those are sort of like the three bigs and I've read a lot of those three authors so um, we got more stuff on uh, Logan's world here so when the eye of terror blinks ships fly between the lost worlds into the rest of the galaxy mines ship their ore and slaves pay their loath slaves slavers ply their loathsome trade uh, where chance permits the forces of the Imperium make their mark bringing to the lost worlds the brutal order of the Imperium if only for a few days and you can see there's some space marines here. And look at the, these space marines acting like cops. Um, just like getting a guy, getting a punker up against the wall. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and I love this space. I love that the, these space marines have bolters. Like this is all proto, like really establishing and locking down things. And that's kind of what I loved about this part of Rogue Trader. This early era was that there was so little of it defined. Um, just and you sort of you had to fill in the gaps yourself and and you know the unknown things become more interesting than the known things um and you can see so this is kind of what i'm going to base the setting on i think they talk about um that they that the humans will sell slavers raid buses for humans which they sell to the orcs 
and here we have your like um, your hover bus gang men. So I guess I got to make some hover buses. Um, your Hell's Reach street punks, which if you look at those, uh, and if you look at what became the um, uh, the brat gangs for Necromunda confrontation, which then became Necromunda. Uh, you can see that sort of influence in these street punks. And another big influence on these, you can also see, is like 2000 AD, Judge Dredd, ABC Warrior. Um, so so generally uh, British uh, genre stuff of the era. Uh, and we have Mercenary Gang Warriors. So Mercenary Gang Warriors, all my little dudes down here. And we've got some Water Sellers and Guards. So that's what I need to make. I need to make like a Water Merchant guy. Uh, miners at work and relaxing nice uh, and then we get into the advanced game and stuff so that's uh, I was gonna go through the rogue trader book but I think we're just gonna keep opening blisters and then uh, at some point this month I will do a a more in-depth deep dive into rogue trader I want to do I'm gonna do a whole series of videos um, once these are painted and I've got my orcs painted so now I've got to paint the humans and then the humans and the orcs can fight but the humans aren't going to fight alone because they've got other humans with them. They've got ab humans with them too. Let's let's do ab humans and then we'll go and we'll do the other humans because that'll be uh, cool. Let's go back over here. So this is the blister that I said I was going to leave to last only because it's got two models in it that I absolutely adore. One of which I previously owned and one of which I totally forgot even existed until I saw it in this blister. Boom. So this is the Space Ogre and Runtling. Uh, not Ratling, Runtling is what they called them initially. Then they became Ratlings later. I don't know what happened, why they didn't stick with Runtling, because Runtling, Runtling feels more appropriate as a 40K name for uh, Halflings, Runtling, Dwarf, Squat, Elf, Eldar, Orc, Orc. <laughs> uh, so, but in here, oh, ho, 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 ho. so this is this ogre. I remember buying this ogre, and, and when I bought this ogre, I don't remember what the blister he came in. I don't remember the code or anything, but I remember the model that came with him was the little. There's a squat model, or maybe even be a runtling model, wearing like power armor, and he's armed with like a little like revolver six gun, like like um, with a bunch of barrels on it. Uh, this one has the chef in it. <laughs> it's awesome. Runtling chef. So let's crack her open. Uh, so I had this ogre, and I remember painting him. I remember the day I got him, and I remember painting him. Uh, oop, I'm losing bases here. Uh, he is sculpted by Jess Goodwin. So he is a Jess Goodwin ogre. So if you know any of this, the, the code C3, uh, C23 ogres that he did for fantasy... This, um, and of course there's no tab, so we don't know what year he was sculpted, but I probably would have bought him in 88, 89. Um, probably 88 is probably one of the early Rogue Trader models I bought. Uh, and so this Ogren is going to be part of my Inquisitor's Warband. And he's got a little badge up here, so I'm going to paint a little Inquisitorial symbol on that. Let's see, I'll zoom in and you guys can, uh, can get a better look at this model, because he is he's quite a decent fellow. Uh, and he's got a proto ripper gun, which I believe at the time um, it looks like a giant auto gun, and I believe at the time it was an auto cannon. Um, and then later on, they sort of created the idea of the ripper gun for ogrens, um, which hit automatically because ogrens are shit shots, or at least it hit automatically in short range. Um, but this guy is he? There's a little bit of lore for him in the advertisement uh, that calls him like the ogre, the ogren hero. Uh, and he comes with a 40 millimeter square base, which I will not be using. I will be putting him on a 40 millimeter round base. I guess I could get one out of here. Or one of the many other, but I'm gonna put. I'll put him on a round base because round bases look better, in general. Uh, and just a really nice little model. And let's take a look at this rattling because this model I've actually never. I totally forgot it even existed, and I'm super hyped that I own it now. Um, so on his base, it just says cook. And on the back, it says Copyright Games Workshop 1980. Uh, I'm going to assume that's an 8, but it's really next to impossible to tell because it kind of runs off the end of the base tab here. Um, but what a great little guy. Uh, his little pistol. Um, so he'll probably join the pirate crew as, as their chef because all pirates need a, need a cook. 
So he can go back here and he'll join the pirate crew as a chef. All right, so now we've done ab humans. I got a beast man, I got an ogren, and I got a runtling. Don't have any squats here, but I do own squats somewhere. Um, but I do want to get a few squats to throw in here. Um, like I said, I have some. Uh, so let's open something that is not... What is this? Here we go. You ready for it? So when we think Warhammer 40,000, what comes to mind, really? Space Marines. Space Marines. So this is a 5001 Rogue Trader blister. So again, these are very, very early Space Marine models. And I believe both of these were sculpted by Bob Naismith, I want to say. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, but let's open up this blister of Space Marines and see what we got in here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put these guys up this way. Make some room for our Adeptus Astartes. Um, and if you know Rogue Trader, you know that like Space Marines and Rogue Trader are a little bit different than Space Marines are now. They're still like genetically bred or genetically created super soldiers through um, psycho indoctrination and chemical castration therapy, gene, whatever, all those like they sort of built that into Rogue Trader later on in the initial book. They just talk about how like Space Marines are, are the Emperor's uh, private, like super elite guys. They're basically Sadukar. If you've read Dune, they're Sadukar. Uh, right down to the fact that like when they talk about recruiting Space Marines, they talk about recruiting them from penal worlds and from feral worlds and just basically finding the most brutal butchery barbarians they can and making them into Space Marines. Because the, the whole idea of the Space Marine as the, the noble space knight, the avenging angel, didn't really come along until later. Um, space Marines were not nice people. I mean, they're, they're, they're definitely not nice people now, but like they've sort of softened them over the years to make them more palatable and more... Um, was he designed in 88 or built in 88? So he would, he would have been sculpted in 88. So I don't know. Like uh, Essentially what, the, what this means, and it may not even mean that that's the year he was released. Because generally you could buy you would buy a new model and the and the, the 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 date on the tab may be already a year or two old when you actually buy the model like on the day the model was released just because they they work that far out. Um, I don't know about these. I know that if if it like I've got some here that say eighty five on them and the Rogue Trader rulebook didn't even come out till eighty seven, so or even eighty eight. I don't know. Mine's eighty eight. Um, but this guy's base taps is 87. So that's when they that's when the sculptor would have put um, tool to putty and sculpted the model. So when the model was finished, they would have stamped the tab with current year, right? So yeah, so I hope that answers your question there, Tyler. I hope that answers Aaron's question. Uh, all right, so here we go. Here we got a couple of Space Marines. So these are some classic guys. Now this blister had had some damage to it. So it looks like I only got one backpack in here, one of the metal backpacks, but that's fine. Um, let's move these guys up here so you can see them a little bit better. So this model I really like, and I've seen some people paint him up as a space police, which if you don't know what space police are, go read Rogue Trader rulebooks. Uh, and he's got like a little like like snub gun, like it looks like an M16, kind of, but like if you cut the barrel off, that's a really cool little gun. And then this guy... Um, is a space marine. He's got a bolter, that old sort of original style big marine bolter. Uh, and this guy, so this guy's base tab says 87, and this guy's base tab says 87. So that's really when like the Rogue Trader project, I think then they were kicking things into high gear. And we'll just put them over here because I don't have bases for them yet. And we'll just collect these two backpacks over here because I think that when I do do this guy, when I do do this guy, I may not give him a backpack, or if I do, I'll give him something different on his back so he doesn't have a Space Marine backpack. Uh, but I got another Blister of Space Marines here. Boom! And I think this is now duplicates of one of these models, but such is life. Um, boom. So again, this is 5001 Rogue Trader. So these are like the first releases for this game. So before... A lot of this lore and stuff was worked out. Why is this blister pack so small? What the? Look at this. Look at how much smaller this is. Maybe you can't see it, but like this one is like considerably smaller to the point where I can't stack it on top of this. 
can stack it inside because it's smaller. Maybe it's just this one is big. Because I'm looking at these, and these all seem to be... So the Ogren and the Runtling, I had no idea. The blister part of the blister pack is actually considerably larger. And I'm assuming that's because this had the Ogren model in it. You learn something new every day. I had no idea they had multiple sizes for these. I know that there were the larger clamshell ones you could get. But I had no idea that uh, they actually made. And I would say that this probably became the default, the larger one. Because uh, that seems to be more the shape and size that speaks to me. Um, so anyways, here we go. Boom! Heavy bolter! Every orc, uh, every orc, every orc doesn't need a heavy bolter, but every every space marine army needs a heavy bolter too. And his tab says marine, and he was also sculpted in '87. So these are the original. Um, there were ones that 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 preceded these, that you can find in the Rogue Trader book. But now I've got a duplicate of my little space cop here, and a couple of the old metal backpacks. Nice. Um, I was gonna see if these are different sculpts, but no. The same. So we got four metal backpacks. Let's grab another blister here. Oh, it says Space Marines on the back. Is it Space Marines on the front? Oh, it's Space Marines on the front. So these are some slightly later releases. So these were now out of the um, 5001 Rogue Trader era Space Marine releases, which, I mean, we can always go back and do this one first, but let's just do this one. So the two blip models in here uh, are sort of the second run of Space Marine releases. And you can see, A, you can tell because of the blister, it's a 5002 Imperial Space Marine blister, branded for Space Marines. Uh, and, on, and on top of that, it comes with the plastic uh, backpack. And with the plastic backpack sprue, you got a little plastic banner, which I will attempt to straighten at some point. Some ASMR for you guys. There you go. Now you can sleep well. Now you'll sleep tonight. Um, so here we go. So we've got a Marine. We've got two Marines. Uh, and remember what I said about how like Marines were just like not good people? Um, they still aren't. I mean, it's just you have to kind of read between the lines to get that lore now. So let's just take a look at this guy here. Love that mask. Nice little haircut. Bolter. And I'm just going to go around and I'll leave a surprise for last. Oh, he just got some severed heads. You know. What every good loyal uh, ultramarine would do is carry around some severed heads with him. Uh, and this guy's cool. And you know what's amazing is that there are like 30-year-old miscasts on some of these. And I don't even care. Like, <laughs> uh, And then this guy's got a really... Whoops, sorry, you can't see this guy. Um, like I said, yeah, part of his face is miscast, but that's fine. So he's got a plasma gun. Yay! So there's a, So we've got a heavy weapon and the heavy bolter. And now we've got a special weapon in the plasma gun. Yay! Um, and he's got a horned helmet symbol on his shoulder, which means he's either a librarian or he's a chaos marine. You know. Uh, and if you look, remember we were talking about models sort of being based on the same maquettes? It looks like these two guys are sort of based... Uh, I think a few additions back for the White Scars. Oh, there are severed heads in the modern room. Yes, yes, well. But that's White Scars. White Scars do that sort of thing. Another blister down. How many more do we got? Oh, I still got a giant stack of them over here. Maybe we'll get, maybe we won't get through all of them today. Um, but I got one more, Mar I got another Marine blister over here, and this is another 5001 Rogue Trader. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see all the glory on the table. Um, so this is another 5001 Rogue Trader blister. And there's a really cool model in here that I'm really hyped to own as I open this and dump the contents onto the table. All the contents, including the dust and the whatnots. Um, so we've got another standard Marine with a bolter here, which you're always going to need lots of. And he is essentially the... Uh, uh, actually, he's not really. He's, I thought he was based on this guy, but he's actually a totally different sculpt. So cool. So there's another Marine. And then this Marine is the one I really am hyped to own. Uh, because this is the Communications Marine. Now, if you know your Forge World Horus Heresy models, they made a updated version of this with the like giant 
communications bubble on the back of his head. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to I'm going to try and soften the lighting here just a little bit cuz that may There we go. That's a bit better. Um So yeah, so he's got a little comms thing built onto the back of his hand and he's got the little enhanced like communications array like bubble dome on his head. So it's just cool to have a nice little comms marine and some more metal backpacks. Look at that. And we'll throw those over there. We'll throw these bases over here. All right. Um, not these. I'm just going to quickly move those across because I want to get into... What do we got? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. What's this? Okay. What is this? Okay. What is this? Oh, this is... These are orcs. They're space orcs. Those are space orc runt herds. And this is this is actually a second edition blister. You can tell by the logo change. And they're handcrafted in pewter, so it's post-1991 for this particular. And this is just two runt herds. And it looks like a snotling in there. Uh, and then these are, this is a duplicate blister. A 5001 Rogue Trader Blister, but there are two Space Orcs in here, and these are duplicates of models I already own. So I'm going to put those back into the uh, into the box, so I won't be opening those. But you know what? Let's just keep opening Space Marines, because I've still got Space Marines to open here, and I want to see just how many I can pull off. Because um, as you can see, these are the if these are my basic Marines, I've got eight. Right? I've got Marine with Bolter, so I've got a Heavy Weapon, a Special Weapon. And then these six guys could just be tactical marines for the most part. Um, I do have... Uh, i got to find that box, though. Just give me a second here while I spin around. Ah. Remember I said I had a whole other box of blisters? Well, there's more than just blisters in here, too. There's some other stuff. Um, what is this? What is this? Space orcs? Space orcs? Okay, yeah. This is all Space Orcs. Good old Space Orcs. Nothing beats Space Orcs. Um, so yeah, this little tub here has got some additional guys. Now these are guys that I picked up um, at other times or have had or whatever. So um, I've got a Medic here. And the, these actually came out in a whole release of Space Marine Medics. Uh, and there were Imperial Guard Medics in the same mix. I've got a space ring with a shuriken catapult because why not? It's a rogue trader. I can do what I want. Um, so a space marine with a shuriken catapult. Hey man, it's Logan's world. Who knows what's going to go down, right? Uh, I got another guy here who's got a bolter and a chainsword and a skull on his shoulder. And he's got a little bit of lead rod on him. This is a fairly, I've had this model for a long, long time sitting in a box. Um, I believe he was painted at one point. It's entirely possible he's never been painted, though. Damn. Um, yeah. So there's another space, another space marine to add to the the pile of many space marines, and a tech marine and a librarian. Uh, because they're these are sort of your positionals, right? Um, so we've got the librarian here, and I really like this librarian model. It's got the little scroll on his shoulder. It's very cool. Let's zoom in on that. Whoa! Zoom in, not out. Uh, he's got a book under his arm. He's on his way to the library, clearly. Um, and he came in a blister, and I think there were three librarian models that you could get. Uh, this is my favorite tech marine, because he's got the lunchbox. Uh, and the tech marine symbol back in those days was this big claw shoulder pad. And if you look on his other shoulder pad, it's all covered in tech bits and stuff. And his little, his wee little bolt pistol here. Uh, and you can see this model was painted, probably painted blue because he was a tech marine. Um, I think I painted my, my tech marines ult, uh, crimson fists. So this guy would have been painted crimson fists and then I would have stripped him and left him in a bits box for years and years and years. Um, so this is one of my original space marines. Very few of those I still actually have. Um, but we're not looking at loose marines here. We want to look at blisters of space marines. So here's another blister, and now this is called Imperial Space Marines, code 5002. So this would have, again, been your slightly later releases, but still you're still within the initial release of Space Marines. And there's two really cool models in here. One that I've never owned, and I'm very hyped to now own, because he's kind of an iconic 
Space Marine, if you remember back. Uh, again, we've got the plastic backpack sprue. We've got some bases. Now this guy's really cool because this guy's definitely an officer. So he's got laurels here, raising the power fist to the sky. And then on this shoulder, he's got the sculled eagle. Um, sort of the big fat bird on his shoulder there with the skull. And you can see the, the laurel wreath. Uh, and his hand is like a gun mounted on the back of his hand. And I think we always used to use that as a plasma gun or like a plasma pistol or something. Cool model. And this one, one of my favorite Space Marine models that I never owned, um, but I'm super hyped that I own him now because he's really cool. He's just got two power fists. So he's just not, he will never be done punching you in the face with his two giant power fists. Uh, no guns for this guy. He's just going to run at you. And if he gets to you, he's going to sock you real hard in the face. All right. You ready for some more? Are these Space Marines? Yes, these are Space Marines. So these are, again, now we're getting a little bit later, later releases. Um, boom. Marines with Terminator honors. So these would have come out after the Space Marine Terminators. Uh, so the Space Marine Terminators came out in a few different releases. So there was the initial, so people call it now the Saturnine pattern, which is the Space Marine Terminator with a huge mash of shoulder pads. And I used to have one back in the day and I actually butchered it. I drilled out the head. I added a Chaos Marine backpack. I put a servitor head in where the head that I had drilled out was, and then added a bunch of pipes and wires to him. And he was like Fabius Biles, like bodyguard um, for my second edition Black Legion army, which just happened to have Fabius Bile in it. Because why wouldn't you have all the special characters? It's, it's second edition. It's the addition of special characters. Um, so that Saturnine was like one of the first Terminators that came out. Then there was a second prototype Terminator which is just happened to be this guy called Space Marine Terminator 2. I just happened to have one in a blister here. Nice segue, right? Um, so this is often referred to as the Turtle Shell Terminator. And I will show you why he's often referred to as the Turtle Shell Terminator. Um, dump him out. Move our foam. Because he's got this big back plate that goes over. Um, so when these guys first came out, there weren't really rules for them initially. GW would do that a lot, was that they would release models um, and not really tell you what they were. They were just like, here's a Space Marine Terminator. Everyone was like, okay, it was a Space Marine Terminator. And then it would sort of, then they'd start expanding on it and going into the lore. So these were the, these were, these were prototypes. Uh, if any, sorry, I'm just going to clean this out so that I can actually put this on his back. If you recognize these old, old GW clippers here. Um, so the turtle shell would fit over the back like so. Obviously, it's lead. So, and then you've got a power fist and something that's twin linked and looks kind of like bolters, bolt pistols. No, it's a storm bolter and power fist. So this is one of the very first Terminators to ever be released, along with that Saturnine. And there was one more that was also released as a prototype Terminator before they released the Terminator box set. Now, the Terminator box set, I believe, had eight models in it. You got a captain, a librarian, and then a full squad of five guys, and then one guy that you could, like, switch out. I'm pretty sure there were eight models in that box, and it was a, it was a Regiments of Renown-style box uh, with those Terminators in it. Um, you got the Assault Cannon. You got a couple of... Did you get Chain Fists? I think you got Chain Fists. Uh, you got Assault Cannon, Chain Fists, um, the Librarian, the Captain... And the sergeant with a power sword, and I believe you. Yeah, I believe you did get the assault cannon. What you didn't get? Oh no, you got the heavy flamer guy too. That's what it is. You got the assault cannon and the heavy flamer guy, and I do believe you got two chain fist options in that box. And then um, subsequently they released terminators with cyclone missile launchers uh, from that same sort of design. And that's sort of the design that they set on that they settled on when they made the terminators. So these proto terminators, which I'm going to show you. Oh, this is a, this is an amazing blister. And it's so heavy because um, that the, I got a blister with one of these guys in it, and then I got a blister with three of these guys in it. So this is sort of it says ultimate terminator. Uh, so this is getting close to when they settled on the final design for the terminators. Um, let's open it up and find out what we got. Let's open it up and take a look at some of these terminators. Oh, that's what this is all about. 
It's all about destroying the collectability of these things. Uh, I, when I when I post this to uh, some of the collecting Facebook groups, and they see that I like ripped open like twenty something blisters of Rogue Trader era blisters, they're gonna lose their minds. Uh, so here we have what is much much closer to that final Terminator design that made it into that box set. You can see you've got the exoskeleton bits on the legs here. Um, you've got uh, the Storm Bolter is almost identical to the Storm Bolter that would uh, the Storm Bolter arm that would be released with those models. At least the Storm Bolter itself is the weapon itself is. The rest of it's still a little bit different. Um, let's see if you can stick that on there and then grab a Power Fist arm. I got a Power Fist and there's a Power Fist arm. And then boom. So there we go. There's the ultimate Terminator, according to the blister. SP-106, ultimate Terminators. Awesome. Um, so I got three of those in here. So that gives me four. It's not enough for a whole squad. Well, it's a good thing I've got another blister of Space Marine Terminator 2. So I have a full squad of five Terminators. Yay! I mean, they're all Stormbolter power fists, but whatever. I don't care. Um, I'm just going to dump those bits in there, and then boom. Uh, that is a full squad of five Terminators for whenever the... And you know what? When the Terminators show up on uh, on Hell's Reach, you know, things are going down. Um, and because I've got Terminators, so when they settled on those final Terminators, that was when they sort of added the Crux Terminatus to the shoulder pad and refined the Terminator design, changed the helmet so it was less this, like weird grinning face or this like weird quasi um very quasi mark 7 armor it actually almost from the profile it almost looks like a mark 6 helmet with the front chopped off and a grill added which i'm sure is how they made the original like like the first concepts for the mark 7 helmet um but you can see like this guy's quite so what they do is they added they, they created the whole idea of the terminators and being and in the lore for them which was in space hulk so that was sort of the first place that terminators really came along was or after these um i think these came out then space hulk came out no space hulk didn't come out until a little bit later yeah and then space hulk came out no I don't know which order it was, but I'm pretty sure that Space Hulk and the Box of Metal Terminators came out around the same time. Um, in fact, the Box of Metal Terminators may have been released to support Space Hulk. Um, they did come out after. You know who I know they came out after? Because there is a White Dwarf article um, giving you rules for how to use the Assault Cannon in Space Hulk. Because the Assault Cannon came in that box... And wasn't in Space Hulk until it was added in through that White Dwarf article. The mind, man. This is this is why I take the mushrooms, the the, the, the cordyceps mushrooms for the brain power to remember all these useless facts. Um, <laughs> anyways, let's look at Space Marines with Terminator honors because that's what that's what we're opening now. And this blister is going to be really easy to open because it's pretty much fell fell apart as I was touching it. So these are Space Marines who would have been part of the first company. These were these were later releases. I want. I'm gonna if I can guess what. I don't know if their tab has a copyright on it because I flipped this guy over and it's blank. Um, but if any of these guys have a tab, I'm gonna say 88 or 89 was this sculpt date. Uh, and of course, I will never know. I would have to go and check stuff of legends to find out. Um, but these guys are in like these guys are very much a later style design. Almost positive these are Jess Goodwin sculpts. Um, and you can see like the, the way that the difference in the way that the Marine armor exists from here to here and here and here, like you've got this guy who's got like a proto Mark seven helmet and a big giant Terminator on and he's got a, he's got a Sergeant. So this guy's a Sergeant. So this guy might be the Sergeant for my squad. This guy's got a Terminator on her and he's got a bolter. He might just be a dude in the squad. I don't know. Uh, and then this guy looks like he's a cap no no i don't see oh he could be a captain um because he's got the gem in the skull i'm not sure if that's a thing that i'm recalling correctly uh what does his helmet look like 
sometimes they would put the ranking symbols on him. And I'll show you that when we get to another Space Frame Blister. Um, hey, Inquisitor Shavak in the chat. You missed uh, <laughs> a whole lot of Space Marine, a whole lot of miniatures, 30-year-old um, models being ripped out of blisters. Um, and that suddenly it's as if a thousand voices cried out uh, of all the... Uh, of all the hardcore collectors out there. Um, so there we go. So there's a Space Marine. Another Space Marine. So I've got a lot of characters. So I've got nine of these backpacks. That's good. Because I'm going to need them. Um, so let's go. Let's keep opening blisters here. What's the next one going to be? It also says Space Marines. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to move this guy over here. So I can push this up. Uh, so what's in this blister? Boom, more Space Marines. And this is Marine Officer, so this is the blister I was saying, I was just referencing. Um, and this one also is, is literally falling apart. So, easy peasy. Oh, and that's one of the larger blisters. So, again, later on, I think that the larger blister pack became sort of standard, because they were packing more stuff into these blisters. Obviously, you're packing bases, you're packing a sprue with backpacks, so you need a larger blister. Um, so these are, again... Um, so now we're into 7,000, 70,000 codes... Uh, yeah, so these the, these blisters say copyright 88, so but that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, but this would have been after sort of the initial space ring. These are these are later space ring models. Um, these probably would have come out around the time of whenever the space marine list was published in White Dwarf, which would have been like after Book of the Astronomicon. It might have even been these might like I feel like. I didn't get these models until 1990. What was it saying? And again, we have no copyrights on their tabs. Um, but this is your lieutenant, this is your captain, and this is your lieutenant commander. So this is your highest ranking space marine, your lieutenant commander. Uh, back in Rogue Trader days, and I believe, no, it's, it's in second edition, there were space marine commanders. But anyways, back in Rogue Trader days, uh, your highest ranking guy was your lieutenant commander. So you're basically your second in charge of the entire chapter. You, you didn't field commanders. You didn't, the, the, the master of the chapter, the, the commander is what they were called. Um, they, they, were, they, they weren't fielded. Oh, I love this guy's shoulder pad. That is such a cool shoulder pad. I've never really seen that before. It's got like this cool little shield in the middle of it. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that guy's shoulder pad. Ooh, too much. Too much, buddy. Zoom out so we can focus. There we go. So you can see, like, he's got, like, this really cool detail on his shoulder pad. And he's lieutenant commander, so on his top of his helmet, you have his lieutenant commander markings to let you know. And he's got a power sword and a little tiny pistol here. Um, great model. So let's now we'll go down to the next rank, which would be your captain. So these are your company captains. He's got your typical spiked shoulder pad. He's got the captain markings on uh, the front of his helmet here. And he's also got a cool little power sword. Um, I like the little power cable going to it. And he's got a bolter or a bolt pistol, whatever you want to do with that. Uh, and then a lieutenant. Hey, everyone thought that like lieutenants were like a new thing that they that existed only as of 8th edition. Only when they made Primaris and all of a sudden you had lieutenants in the Space Marine Army. Lieutenants existed in Rogue Trader. Here is one, a lieutenant. Uh, and generally, I think lieutenants were like a one plus uh, option, or yeah, one option for Space Marine armies. You had to have a lieutenant, because generally this would be the guy that would be leading your army. Um, and then this one, he's also on the same, a little bolt pistol and a power sword. And he's got a little, little lieutenant markings on his helmet up there. And he's got a little Terminator on her down here. Very cool. Can't wait to paint these, but the Marines are actually not going to be painted until probably next year. The Space Pirates over here, let's zoom way out. Um, all these guys here, all my little Space Pirates, this is this month's project and probably extending into December. Um, here's an interesting blister, but I think I will skip the. You know what? We'll do these together. So, as you can see, I've got a Librarian, I've got a Tech Marine, I've got uh, a captain, a lieutenant, a lieutenant commander. I've got a special weapon model. I've got a heavy weapon model. I've got a comms marine. 
Um, I've got Space Police. Uh, I've got a Apothecary, although they weren't called Apothecaries at the time. They were just called Medics. But what am I missing? What's missing? What's what's the the like quintessential aspect of like a Space Marine chapter? Their their fealty, their loyalty, their um, uh, yeah, I'm talking about chaplains. <laughs> um, so I got two blisters of chaplains here. One is really cool. I'll open that one. And this is actually a late, because um, it's handcrafted in pewter. Um, oh, and it's saying thank you. 1993. So this is a second edition blister, but the model in it is a Rogue Trader model. I'll open that one after I open this one. This one's already been opened because there were three models in here. But uh, I gave one away to a friend, Alex, if you're in the chat. Chaplain, Space Marine Chaplain. So this is RT101. What a great code. RT101 Space Marine Chaplains. I feel like the Chaplains were the first of the, like, I call them positionals. They're like the first of the positionals to be released. I feel it would Chaplain, Librarian, Tech Marine. Actually, no, the Medics would have been. But they weren't called Apothecaries then. They were just called Space Marine Medics. Um, and there were Imperial Medics as well. Uh, so I've got two Chaplains in here. Uh, two that I really like. One is uh, another blister, another thing of backpacks. Um, I like this guy because he's got his own banner on his back. Um, ooh. Look at that cool face on him. He's got this bolter. He's got some really nice detailing. You can do some like nice metal working in here and the, sort of this little like filigree. Uh, skull shoulder pads because he is a chaplain uh, and the skulls are where it's at. Uh, this says 1980. What on earth does that say on his tab? It says 1988. Yes. Um, it, it, it almost looked like a 5 in the reflection there. And I was like, there's no way this model's from 1985. That's impossible. Uh, and he doesn't have a Crozius. He's got a sword. This guy's got a Crozius, though. Uh, the Crozius Arcanum, the, 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 the badge of office of a chaplain. Uh, so here we go. Here's one of the guy with the Crozius. I actually really like this model a lot. Um, I thought I would like... I thought I was thinking about this one, putting this one in my army. My army. My little band of space marines here. Uh, I really like this guy, though. I don't know. And I'm trying to remember which one I gave away to Alex. Eh, doesn't matter. Um, space marine chaplains. Yeah. So there you go. So I've got all the positionals. I've got a librarian. I've got an apothecary. I've got... Um, a tech marine, and in fact, I've got two tech marines. I don't know why I thought this was a. Uh, I don't know why I thought this was a chaplain in here. It's not. I just realized looking over at the model. Um, so this is a jet bike, and I have a couple of other jet bikes. I have some old jet. Let me pull out one that might have an orc stuck to it. <laughs> I'm like what? Why would you stick an orc on a jet bike? Because I can. It's Rogue Trader, and I can do that. Um, this is one of the older jet bikes. This is the. Uh, this is called the Bullock Jet Cycle. So this is the first jet bike model that they made. Um, ignore the Freebooter Orc that's glued to the top of it. Um, that just happens to be me chasing whimsy and being like, well, I'm going to put this Orc on here because I can. Um, but that's the Bullock Jet Bike. This, the jet bike in here is a little bit different. Uh, and I have some other jet bikes as well. I think I have another one that's just the jet bike. But anyways. Um, let's open this up. Let's crack this sucker open and get to the goodies inside. All right. So we've got the old flying stand. And did I not get a peg for this? All right, Games Workshop, I'm going to contact you. Oh, no, there it is. I was about to say I'm going to contact Games Workshop and be like, so I bought this blister and I didn't get a flight peg. Can you send me one? And they'll be like, well, what blister? And I'll be like, uh... The blister is 0145. Um, no, no, that's Terminator Arms. Where's the, where's the Tech Marine blister? What's that crazy? That's oh, this one here. <laughs> Code 8011, Imperial Space Marine Jet Bike. Second edition blister. Um, hey, more backpacks. You can always use more Space Marine backpacks. I'm going to need a bunch of them. Because uh, I have models that don't have backpacks that. We'll need them. So this, let's figure out how this thing goes together. <laughs> um, okay, there's the saddle. So I guess that piece fits like that. And there's the front of the jet bike. Oof. And you can see this is pewter, 
and you can see the oxidation on it because um, this is the way pewter basically oxidizes whereas lead doesn't oxidize necessarily lead will actually rot um, pewter will oxidize they don't rust it just changes this weird color it's 130 okay good to know um, and I guess this would fit uh, oh I see like that and then these legs would then go on it like this there we go and then what do we got I like this I like there's no handlebars on this thing I have no idea how he he controls or holds on or whatever because these jet bikes didn't have handlebars I'm pretty sure Unless, unless I got a mispacked blister. Um, but so I got a second tech marine. So I got a tech marine riding on a jet bike, which is very cool. Um, yeah. Dump. Uh, and I got one more blister that I'm going to open today. Uh, and this is a another blister that's basically just going to fall apart as soon as I put it on the table because it's, it's pretty much already been opened and whatnot. But these are models that... Mm, oof. Glory, glory, glory be. Um, I remember when I talked about this guy, Inquisitor Kafka Dosati? Well, he's a member of Ordo Xenos, uh, and there are other Inquisitors. There's the Ordo Malleus, and there's the Ordo Hereticus. Uh, boom, Ordo Malleus. So these are Ordo Malleus Inquisitors. Uh, three absolutely, absolutely amazing miniatures. And someone is, like... The blister kind of came apart a little bit, and someone's resealed it, and whatever but look at these guys oh man these are so cool um and when they first came out um if you have rogue trader um i don't think it's in lost in the damned i think it's in slaves to darkness where the rules for the gray knights and the order Malleus are and that really spells out the lore of like what the order Malleus are um and they're like demon hunters and um there's also the uh, Ian Watson book, Inquisitor, which was later, later republished as, or is like the Draco series. And it's it's early 40K, not like early like Black Library, although it's not Black Library, um, but early 40K novels. And so the world is very much left to interpretation. And there's a lot of really interesting um, things going on in it. Uh, I think there's squats in it. There's a guy who's dressed as a Harlequin, but isn't actually a Harlequin, or may or not be, you don't know. There's an assassin that has like a, she's got like polymorphine condition, but she can only transform into a gene stealer. There's very weird stuff going on in, the, in that book. Um, but here we have, boom. Order Malice Inquisitors. So, and it kind of talks about what they are uh, in the Lost in the Damn book and, and sort of explains like, that they're the branch of the Inquisition that hunts demons. So these guys are demon hunters. So they need a purpose to be on Logan's world. And they're not going to show up on Logan's world for a while, I think. I think um, we're going to build the narrative up to the point where these guys will need to show up for some reason. And what could possibly bring them to Logan's world? I don't know. But I like that they're also, like, at that point... Um, Ordo Malice was totally willing to use like chaos weaponry against chaos. So all these guys have demon blades. Like this guy's got a demon blade. This guy's got a crazy looking demon blade of some kind. And he's got like what I will probably use as a needler or some kind of. Oh no, it'd be a, I guess it'd be psy cannons. Uh, and this guy has probably the coolest demon blade. Because um, that's because Ordo Malice would basically use chaos to fight chaos. Um, and that was, you can see a little the little hammer symbol on here, or maybe you can't. It's a little hammer symbol on here. That was sort of the symbol of the Order Malleys at the time. Uh, he's got some other little thing going on over here. But these models are like, um, very much uh, significant in terms of building the larger expanded 40k lore. Uh, these models were very critical to that. Critical. So there we have it. So that's uh, a whole lot of blisters that I just opened up. Um, <laughs> so a whole lot of models on my desk now that uh, I have to prime and paint. Um, this week, I'm going to start with my Inquisitor. I'm going to do him first because he's actually going to... He actually needs to be done for my Space Orc army. Uh, 
And then I'm going to do his valet, his his Batman, his, uh, his, his personal butler, Mr. Butletron, the robot. And then, uh, and then I'll start working on these space pirates. And then when these space pirates are done, uh, I'm going to go back and start working on a, uh, finishing up a few things in my orc army, just so that I have two opposing forces that can that can I can then start playing some rogue trader games with. Um, and it's going to be humans versus orcs. And then when the orcs start to get a little bit too uppity, because there's, there's just so many so many more orcs than humans. Uh, that I own. Uh, I need more humans. Um, uh, let's see here. It's weird to see terminators in front and back halves rather than torsos and legs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this show. I hope you enjoyed my stream today. Not me painting. Tomorrow I'll be back painting. So tomorrow, same orc time, same orc channel. I'll be back here um, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna paint these two models. So if you want to see me paint this Inquisitor, uh, come back tomorrow. Um, and then if you want to see me work my way through cleaning and paint, priming and painting all of this, uh, the Marines probably won't, I probably won't get to the Marines this year. Marines are definitely going to be a 2021 project because I actually need a few more in order to make a fieldable unit. And I don't want to have Marines showing up in my narrative campaign until there's a reason for them to show up right like this my whole idea is that it all escalates it escalates from like um humans to orcs and then ordo xenos and then uh and then the space marines are like well we got to go and fix this problem that you know whatever and then eventually at some point something's going to go on that's going to require the presence of these bad boys so yeah so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'm going to sign off now. So I'm going to end my stream. Uh, if you are new to here, um, like me on Facebook. Uh, so click and subscribe, whatever the bell thing. What do they say on YouTube? I like all YouTube videos start like this. What's up, guys? It's Christian from the Eternal Chronicles coming to you with another video. That's how every YouTube video starts. Not mine. Mine starts with me usually staring off into space trying to figure out what it is that I'm doing. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so, all right then. Um, yeah, Rogue Trader. Uh, and, and I'm going to talk more about Rogue Trader as this month goes on because this is basically the month of me painting Rogue Trader models. Last month was the month of me painting Rogue Trader models, but I was painting very specific Rogue Trader models, which was just space orcs. Um, so this month I'm going to be painting Rogue Trader models, and I may take a break because it, I don't know if you saw, if you were here at the top of the hour, but this was sitting on the table. Because um, this is just to show you that um, 30 years later, and I'm still building and painting Space Marines. Like, I just, I can't stop Space Marines. Can't stop Space Marines, yo. Um, so, from this, you know, to this, it's a lot of a lot of big changes in uh, in the game, and you know I've played the game in every edition. Uh, there's not a single edition I did not play at least one game of. I think sixth edition I may have played one game of, uh, one or two. Um, seventh edition I probably played maybe a dozen games, and eighth edition I'm pretty sure I played a half dozen games. So it gets less, it gets less. But ninth edition, which has come out, and if you noticed, um, maybe you didn't notice, but over here on my couch i've got the space ring codex and the new 40k rulebook sitting there because i've been reading those um and i hid them over there in case someone was like oh look he's got it um because i'm interested in playing some ninth edition in 2021 i want to do some crusade because again i'm a narrative player so i like the idea of narrative gaming i like the idea of building a story so why necromunda is my favorite games workshop game of all time um because it, it has that narrative campaign there's an experience system, there's that advancement. So you get that in kind of the crusade, and I like the idea. Um, I also like the idea of not bothering with points, you know. Um, balance is an illusion in these games. Uh, even chess doesn't have balance, right? Because white gets to go first, and black get, gets to go second. So there's no such thing as, as balance. Um, you can try and make things as granular as possible and be like, well, a bolt pistol is only worth one point, but a circum pistol is worth two points. We've been through that. I like the idea of power level. I like the idea of, eh. Seven power. What is that? Well, I don't know. What is he armed with? Doesn't matter. He's seven power. 
I like that. So that's why another reason why I like the idea of Crusade is that it's nice and, and simple in terms of list building. And I can just throw some Space Marines down on the table and play some games and keep track of what they do. And then they'll get better as they get experience. And that's really cool to me. So yeah, so in 2021, look for some Space Marine Crusade games. Um, also look for Rogue Trader. Because that's really what I'm excited to do right now is to uh, is is to indulge the, the 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 13 14 year old version of myself that uh, remembers all this stuff when it was brandy new um, and just had a real thrilling afternoon opening blisters because that was a lot of fun. Um, it was great to touch models that you know were were cast 30 years ago and have sat in a blister, um, only for me to come along and what did what did comic book guy in The Simpsons say? Oh no, you've taken it out of its original packaging. It's no longer a collectible. Uh, that's what I just did with all this. It's, I mean, they're still collectible, but they're not in their original packaging anymore. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that's it. So thank you very much for watching. Um, remember to like and subscribe. Hit the bell notification, blah, blah, blah. I do this every day, Monday to Friday, noon until whenever. Um, and I will see you all in the flippity flop. I'm Christian for the Eternal Chronicles. Peace out. Thanks for watching. All that good stuff. And I'm going to stop the stream. How do I?